Today I'm going to use ImageJ to kind of play with this classic X-ray CD reconstruction method, filtered back projection method. CD reconstruction is something you might find not very intuitive or easy to understand, but by playing with this program that will help you kind of going back and forth between X-ray projections and reconstructed cross sections, I hope that you get a little bit better idea or understanding of how reconstruction works. So let's say that we're looking at this like blue egg-like object, and its cross section right in the middle here looks like this. To keep it simple, we're going to just look at one cross section. And what we're going to do is to simulate X-ray projections using this cross section and see if we can put this cross section back together by doing this filter to back projection reconstruction calculation. Okay, to do that, I'm gonna go to plugins and then go to Radon Transform. This is on an ImageJ plugin, and I'm gonna put a link in my post so that you can download this plugin and do the same thing. Okay, and Radon Transform is gonna help you simulate the X ray projections. There are many parameters, but we're going to just look at this one. This is the angular increment. You can see this as the step size of the CT scan. I'm going to leave this as a 1 for now and click Calculate. And it's going to calculate a set of projections from 0 to 180 degrees. So we have 180 projections here. And this is what sometimes people call a sinogram. So let's think about what we're looking at here. To understand this better, I'm going to draw a line here to extract just one projection. I'm going to analyze and plot profile, or you can do control K. So this is just one projection, meaning that this is the projection into one direction. Okay. Now what we're looking at here is you can see this projection as an accumulated uh, value for either absorption or the density for a particular x-ray beam to go through. So I will show you what I mean by this. So let's say that uh, um, x-ray beam goes through this area and it's all air so you're going to end up having a really low value for the accumulated, accumulated density. And if you go through here you have a little bit of gray material. That means you see a little bit of absorption or accumulated density. And when you go through here, now you're going through really dense area, so you're going to see a peak here. And in the same manner, you can keep plotting this accumulated absorption slash density into the projection. And then when you go all the way here, you see really low value again. So this is a projection into one, this vertical direction. So that's one projection. And then we have 180 of those from 180 different directions. Okay. Now, if you look at, let's look at a different spot. If you look at here, this is 90 degrees and look at the projection. Now you get something like this. Okay. And when you look at those two projections, I wonder if you can guess. If you back project this um, projection into the cross section, you can kind of tell that, um, let me draw a line here too. So this peak is representing where the high density area is. And you can tell that this is where it's coming from, right? And this peak here, I don't know if you can see it, uh, from the 90 degree projection, that is telling you that the high density area is in the middle of this image. So by combining those two projections, you can tell where this high density area is. So that's just two projections. Now let's see what happens if we just use those two projections 
to reconstruct the image. And to do that, I have to simulate 90 degree increment that gives us only two projections. So I'm going to calculate two projections. So this is our CT scan. Let me put this over here. And I'm going to use only those two projections to reconstruct the cross section. And this is what we get. You see what's happening? So we used one projection that I had a peak here that was telling us that the high density area is somewhere here. And we had another projection that was pointing us to this area for the high density material. So we can tell that the high density area is somewhere here, which is correct based on this image. But because we had only two projections, what you can get as a reconstruction result is kind of crude. This can be resolved simply by increasing the number of projections or decreasing the angular increment. So let's say that we're going to have 30 degrees. Now we will have six projections. And then make sure that you choose the original one to calculate the projections. Now we have, you see, we have a one, two, three, four, five, six projections. And then we're going to use this to reconstruct the original density. Okay, so let me make this smaller so that we can do a better comparison. So this, those are two projections. And this one is six projections. You can see that the, when you have six projections, the reconstructed image is getting a lot closer to the original image. Now I'm going to jump all the way to the original setting, one degree. Now we're going to create 180 projections like this. And if you use all of them to reconstruct the original image, now we get this. Let me clean this up a little bit. So this is the original image, and this is the result from two projections, six projections, and 180 projections. So you can see the kind of process. When you have multiple projections, you can kind of back calculate what the original structure was. And then when you have enough projections, you can have a pretty good reconstruction of this original image. So this is how, in a nutshell, reconstruction works. And you can download this Radon Transform plugin and play with, you know, cross-section. And I'm going to put multiple kinds of cross-sections you can try on with or play with. And hopefully you will get a better understanding or feel of how this works. I hope this is helpful for you and thank you for watching.